Hey there and welcome to Get Indie Gaming. With EGX bringing their roadshow to Berlin, in this video we take a look into the top 20 indie games at the show, many of which are new to me that I'd be making a beeline to go and play. Let's begin at number 20 and in no real order of preference, we start with Ad Infinitum. This one first popped into the field of interest back in late 2016. Things went dark for a while and I had actually wondered if this first person survival horror game had been cancelled. Thankfully it seems otherwise. This one looks reasonably classy and oozes delicious menace. Next up and at number 19, Ecosystem is looking to offer a deep creature based simulation environment where you make and modify animals and their characteristics and high level behaviours. The game sets about a simulated evolution of the life forms within the environment by a form of natural selection. They evolve and they adapt to their environment that you create. If you want to see more of this there's a demo which you can download from the game's website. The link can be found down in the description. Sliding over the shale and into our number 18 position. Lonely Mountains Downhill is out now and having followed its development for the past three or so years, I'm so happy to say it's an utter delight to play. The visuals with their use of vibrant colours and clever depth of field tricks as you make your way down the tracks, well it's all superbly done, although for me, the real cherry on the top comes from the audio. The team have stripped it back to the bare bones of the noise of the bike as it moves down the terrain and natural environment sounds of the play areas. Lonely Mountains is super fun and it's certainly one for the streamers. At number 17 in a game I played back at this year's Gamescom, Spitlings is a great playing local arcade affair where if one player messes up, everybody else has to restart the level. As Couch Co-op Games, this will come out fairly high on the list of titles that's likely to induce family and friend based feuds, insults and shouting, although it does it in such a way that's just good old fashioned fun. Spitlings is due out soon on home PC and all of the usual consoles. At number 16 and another of the games that grabbed my attention at this year's Gamescom, El Hijo or The Sun bills itself as a game version of a spaghetti western. It's a stealthy adventure where you play as a six year old boy on his quest to find his mother. There's no violence and much of the progression comes by way of solving environmental based puzzles and you're also able to implement distraction techniques and hide in the shadows. All this is topped off with a first rate soundtrack and for stealth fans this could be a little hidden gem. At number 15 and one of the most intriguing indie games on display at this year's EGX Berlin, Ink Luinati is a deliciously quaint looking turn based strategy game within a medieval setting about illustrated animal battles with plenty of eccentric humour. There's single player with local and online multiplayer options too where you use so called living ink to paint and command your animals in various battles to ultimately become the master illustrator. Up next we have Chris Tales. Here you join Chris Bell, a time mage, in this homage to classic JRPGs in what's a hand drawn 2D style of animation that's done frame by frame. With somewhere in the region of 20 hours of playtime when it featuring branching storylines, Innovative combat, all within an overall experience inspired by the likes of Chrono Trigger, Final Fantasy VI and more modern efforts such as Persona 5, Chris Tales is expected out at some point in 2020. At number 13 and something totally new to me, Get to the Orange Door promises a vivid neon and chrome soaked adrenaline pumping roguelite FPS with plenty of fast paced parkour action. Taking inspiration from Halo, the classic Doom franchise and the hugely unappreciated Titanfall 2, this one boasts over 20 customizable weapons, loot and burn cards to boost your character and numerous player modes, including the ninja one where you're only armed with a sword. While this is the first time I've seen it, it came out in early access in May of this year and there's a Switch port expected soon. So cracking on with number 12, Ministry of Broadcast. This is a narrative cinematic platformer inspired by the original Prince of Persia and Oddworld Abe's Exodus. 
This comes from a four-person team based out of the Czech Republic. The Mood seeks to form a dark hybrid of Orwell's 1984 and the hypocritical nature of today's reality TV. Ministry of Broadcast is expected to launch late this year via Steam and also onto the Switch and PlayStation 4. At number 11, Jessica Underneath the System will offer an interactive found footage type of novella that's inspired by Sam Barlow's telling lies and her story, amongst others. You're tasked with going through a number of data sources within a computer desktop environment to piece together Jessica's backstory, her motivations, and possible criminality. Now at number 10, Upside Drown is something I know almost nothing about. You do take control of a character called Nora on her way through what appears to be an utterly stunning looking mystical swamp, although at the time of this recording much of what I know about this game comes from its Twitter feed and Facebook page. So far as I can tell there's no meaningful and dedicated website or Steam wishlisting page. This has me super intrigued though and by goodness I want to know a lot, lot more. Up next and at number 9, Out of Place is a third person story driven tale which features a teenage lad and from the demo I saw at Gamescom and the artwork together with associated trailers, visually it's perhaps one of the most interesting games of the list. Like the previous game, I'm really looking forward to getting to know Out of Place in plenty more details, although what I've seen of it so far, well it does all look rather lovely. In 8th place and keeping up with the narrative theme for much of the games in this countdown, Resort is a puzzle free open world, low poly game featuring an interactive story about repressed trauma and buried secrets. You play as Laura Tanner, an acclaimed writer who's visiting a small town that's soon to be obliterated by a comet where a few of the inhabitants are refusing to leave their homes. The choices you make shape and transform Laura's world in this fully voiced game that's full of quirky and interesting characters. At number 7 and one I have featured in my hidden gems of the London EGX show a few weeks ago, if I were headed to EGX Berlin though I'd still want to take another look at Edgar Bok Bok in Balzac. The time I've already had with this chap and his chicken companion has been most delightful and if you only have eyes for one point and click adventure then I can wholeheartedly recommend you put this one on your wish list today. At number 6 and by a country mile the most, let's call it simplistic looking game on the rundown, Mr. Grayscale is a mechanics driven puzzler platformer. It uses a rotate the world type of system where you move between black and white and by doing so in conjunction with spatial logic and reasoning, you solve the room and move on. While there's no firm release date, Mr. Grayscale will come to home PC and the Xbox. Moving on into the top 5, taking this slot is Roki which is an adventure game with its roots in Scandinavian folklore and legends. I've had some time with a recent demo and found the gameplay with its puzzles and narrative direction setting really rather compelling. I'm also really keen on the art style the folks have used, particularly how colourful and yet sparse some of the colour schemes are with single colour blocks used without gradients having a striking impact. It's also non-violent and socially inclusive and I'm sure will appeal to many of you out there. Roki at this moment is coming to home PC and the Switch at some point in 2020. At number 4 we have Lost Ember which comes to Steam, VR and the consoles this November 22nd. In Lost Ember you play as a wolf in a world without humans having been reclaimed by animals. Here you're able to control other animals which you can use their abilities to get places where the wolf can't usually go. This means you can fly like a bird, dig into the ground like a mole and climb steep cliffs like a mountain goat. Well, This certainly looks very different and while a few questions remain on the substance of the gameplay, I'm certainly willing to give it a shot when it pops out in just a few weeks time. At number 3 and the first runner up as it were, we have Duru. As a fair few others in this showcase, I have no previous knowledge of it, although I do understand it will launch in the summer of next year on home PC with ports onto consoles and mobile expected sometime later. I'm super keen to see more of this in what is a 2D puzzle platformer 
all set within a West African colony of mole rats. You play as Thule, and while solving puzzles with the help and sometimes hindrance of an AI companion, it tells the tale of someone's struggles with insecurities, depression, and friendships. All in the game dialogue relies on using visualization cues, and while the topic at play is reasonably heavy, it all seems to have been done in such a light-hearted and touching way. Coming in at number two, Cloud Punk seems to be a walking, driving and a conversational game where you play as a courier in a semi-legal, semi-dodgy delivery firm where you traverse the city by way of your car or on foot. Along the way, you'll meet a wide variety of NPCs, different AI systems, androids and humans from a wide range of social classes. It's all played out over the course of a single night where everybody you meet has a story to tell. This reminds me very much of the recent Neocab, and all its neon-drenched goodness is expected to launch in 2020. So at number one, Minute of Islands is, as you can see on screen right now, a drop-dead, stunningly put-together narrative adventure game with puzzle sections that comes from the developer behind the inner world. It's set to come out by way of Steam and the Nintendo Switch sometime next year. The comic book stylings are suitably impressive and all have an exceptionally high level of technical detail, particularly across the characters and the backgrounds. The animations look as smooth as newly melted butter and all of this beauty is underpinned further by a haunting and evocative accompanying soundtrack. Minute of Islands puts me very much in mind of the recent Mutazione and I'm hoping it's every bit as compelling. So which games do you want to see more of? Leave us a comment and let me know what you think, and if you've liked the video, don't forget to click the like button, and if you haven't done so, now is an excellent time to subscribe to the channel. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again here soon for more indie game videos.